<laughs> transactions, yeah. stepping stones. Those are the two words that come to mind when I think about what a narcissist is actually seeking in a quote unquote relationship. A relationship to them is a transaction. It's literally what can I get or gain out of this person and what types of things I, I, I these these people that I'm you know this person that I'm with they are a stepping stone they're a stepping stone okay when I met my ex-husband <laughs> let me tell you something ladies please listen up right now listen to what I I'm going to tell you you do not Take in a bum man and help him out. Okay? You do not take in a bum man. That, that man was looking for a place to live when I met him. Wow. He was in between getting out of a relationship with his ex. He was living at home. He saw an opportunity with me. If he did not live with me for the five years that he did, six years that he did, he never would be where he is now, okay? So so he was using me, all right? He was using me, using my parents' apartment, you know, where he was paying next to nothing to live there while he was, he was becoming a bum and just finding the next person he was going to. So he got his real estate license and, and was able to do what he did because he was living off of me and my situation. So this is just the truth. This is what they all do. They live off of other people. You're going to know you're in a narcissistic relationship because you are you are not going to be acting yourself. And you're going to feel it. Other people are going to feel it. Um, and as uh, Dr. Pepper here, 76, just worded it, absolutely correct. As... They go up the chain in, you know, going from an what I call like an ignorant narcissist all the way to a malignant narcissist. When you get into the, the category that you're considered a malignant narcissist, you actually get off and have a good time and, and, and are elated. You go to sleep at night knowing how many people you have destroyed. <clears throat> that's what's in their head. They actually think about this. And I could, I could give you proof of what, how I know this. They enjoy hurting people. They enjoy destroying lives. They enjoy watching your world flip upside down under their demise, under their, you're, you're their slave, and they enjoy it. They enjoy watching good people that have actual self-esteem, self-confidence. Mm -hmm. They enjoy watching that that person just completely lose it underneath their 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 shenanigans and their in that that they 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 view that as powerful they get power they think that they're they have power watching good people suffer under their hands and so you have to understand if if you if you find that all of a sudden who you once were you don't recognize her or him anymore in the mirror you're looking at yourself and you're like, where, where is she? Where, where did she go? And your friends and family are noticing this. You're more quiet than you normally are. You're not interested in the, in the things you once were. You're letting yourself go. You have no, you just want to sleep all day. You're depressed. You're anxious all the time. And this is when people start like, it, it gets, it gets, see, they're living on the dark side. So they want you living on the dark side with them. They enjoy this. They enjoy it. And it gets dark, you guys. I mean, if you are listening to this podcast, you have to understand this is, it gets really dark. This gets spiritual. Or you're like, doctors can't help you. They're going to, doctors are going to put a mask on the situation by just pumping you up with all these medications. And the and you know that old saying, Paxton, that old saying, if before you diagnose yourself with, with depression or anxiety, oh. take a look if you have any a-holes in your life that need to go. And yeah, that's look, what we're discussing who you, here. Who you're associating and hanging out with is what yep. I'm saying, right? Yep. You gotta take a look at who's in your life first that's before you ever gonna say, Oh, it's a me problem. It's not a you problem, you guys. Guarantee it. 
it's a one-sided relationship, a one side, a one-sided transaction. It's what this is that you're going into. But the main thing you guys have to recognize is that's what they're seeking is total control. They're going to do anything they can think of. And nine times out of 10, you're going to find that somebody in their home did that to them. All right. Or on the opposite end of the spectrum, or sometimes it's a, it's a mix of two. They had a parent that completely spoiled them, let them get their way 24 seven. So they don't understand they're delusional. They don't understand social norms or they don't understand that they don't, they can't get their way 24 seven. And once they become, they, they go out there into the world outside of mommy and daddy's. And a lot of times they had the narcissistic father that was just pure evil doing evil things to the child and the mother felt sorry and the mother was like oh no 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 and never punished them never gave them uh consequences for their actions so what did they learn i can do all these things and there are going to be people out there that are going to placate my behaviors and accept me for who i am type of deal <laughs> jealousy and anger they they have to have rage all the time and another narcissist is going to provide them with that so they can continue this sick cycle dramatic cycle together or they they they're, they're going to find it they're going to eventually find a doormat okay we we hope and pray and guess what more and more empaths out there who, who are us basically the people that found my channel that are finding your channel Paxton they're the one the educated empath are the ones to be feared we're the ones to be feared because we're actually their favorite, but they don't have access to us anymore. Because guess what? This information is spreading like wildfire and they're not getting it. So incredibly selfish. And this is them. This is what we're describing. And it's it's that, you know, the whole pride goeth before the fall. That's what's going on here. The selfishness leads to the pride. They're not going to do that hard work of looking within. They're not going to do it. It's too much work. If you've ever watched a narcissist in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s actually try to go to a therapist, actually start trying to go to a men or women's group or start going to church, there's it just like people, just like anything else, uh, there's going to be a shelf life for that. The so time's going to be up only, at some point. They can only do it for so long before you. And what I do to other people, especially intimate partners, but not only business partners, okay. what I do to other people is that I objectify them. I take away their vitality. I reduce them. I reduce them to a function, an instrument, a tool, a device. I make them lose the ability to conceive of themselves as separate entities with rights, wishes, preferences, priorities, and so on. I assimilate and digest them. I body snatch and mind snatch. 